Here at AGBT, we asked the question, what's the easiest way to get whole human gene expression from a limited amount of sample? Hi, Kelly. Hi. I understand you've got a great poster on the ion amplicity transcriptome human gene expression. What can you tell me about it? Yeah, it's a, it's a poster highlighting some of the work we've done with a collaborator, Dr. Jim Whitliffe. Um, he's really spent his life studying breast cancer and researching this important disease. Mm -hmm. And so we partnered with him to use um, the new product um, to measure gene expression levels from these really limited samples. And so in these particular samples then, you're looking at all the, the whole human genome. Right, transcriptome, the whole, right? Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, so gene expression from, from all the genes that are well documented. Um, it's really targeting um, gene level expression of, of mm -hmm. mRNAs. And so why wouldn't someone use a whole genome microarray? It's a mature technology. It's been out, what, 15 years? Right. In fact, historically, um, Dr. Whitliff and his research has used a lot of microarray data. Um, I think really what um, we're hearing people want to do and, and what I'm excited about is taking some of the benefits of microarray technology like limited areas of genes that you're interrogating which leads to simple analysis, quick and simple analysis, but also expanding those capabilities to get a broader dynamic range and really tapping into low input as well and also FFPE um, types of samples that are um, compromised in a way and, yes. and may not be ideal for microarray technology. It's a, it's a nice technology that requires just little amounts of starting material. How little? 10 nanograms really is the sweet spot, but we've gone from probably 1 nanogram to 100 nanograms. And importantly, it's total RNA, so you don't have to remove um, ribosomal RNA or you don't have to enrich for poly A. Mm -hmm. um, you can use total RNA, so kind of limiting the, the processing you're doing to the samples. So in the microarray context, people would typically amplify, right, for the CRNA production. In this context, we're doing an AmpliSeq method and then reading out via sequencing. Is that correct? Right. So the idea is we have um, a, a short gene-specific amplicon for each well-understood, um, well-documented gene. So they, um, in one panel, so in the single panel, we have just about 21,000 amplicons representing the genes, this the is, mRNA genes. This yeah. is 21,000 yeah. plex it's amplification. Actually, yeah, 20,802, I believe, but yeah, 21,000 genes that are interrogated in one multiplex amplification reaction from as little as 10 nanograms. So therefore, the, the sort of workflow handling is very easy, is that correct? Very easy, it's the classic AmpliSeq workflow. The only difference um, being that we do an RT up front since it's sure. um, RNA. RNA based, but everything else is, is the same. So you're getting an easier workflow, it's faster than a microarray because you're not involving overnight hybridization. Right. And you're also getting, you mentioned, greater uh, dynamic range. Yeah. Is that sensitivity as well as overall? Yes, so we've looked at, um, you definitely get more genes called mm. um, present mm -hmm. using this technique um, compared to um, microarrays. And we looked at where those genes are, and largely they're in the um, lower dynamic range of, of lower gene expression. So you increase your sensitivity, you expand your overall dynamic range, and, and, and do it, it quickly and, and easily. So. And quickly and easily <laughs> is what people like to hear, right? Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much for the details. Yeah. For the details, you can go ahead and access the uh, poster. It's up on SlideShare.